everyone. In this video, we will be looking at compound transformations and how to combine multiple transformation matrices when moving from one frame to another in a robotic system. If you aren't quite familiar on how transformation matrices work, check out my previous video on spatial descriptions and transformations by clicking the link up here. To start off with an example, let's have a look at this sketch of an ABB robot, which is used in numerous industrial plants and factories. It has a fixed base with five rotational joints. First one, second, third, fourth, and fifth joint. Now each of these five joints would have their own frame which shows how the joint or the manipulator is positioned or angled in space. For example, have a look at these two frames defined for the first and second joint. We can call the first frame A and the second frame B. Now frame B can be expressed with respect to frame A using a 4x4 transformation matrix denoted by TAB or B relative to A. This would comprise of a rotation matrix RAB, the position vector of the origin of B with respect to A, three zeros and a one to complete the matrix. Using transformation matrices or in this case TAB we can link frame A and frame B. A robotic system such as the one shown here will have multiple frames defined for each joint and multiple transformation matrices. Using this we can link each and every frame together. This is best described using an example but before I go into that let's have a look at inverse transformation matrices. Right, so using TAB as an example gives you B relative to A. However, depending on the calculation you are doing or the problem you are trying to solve, you may sometimes need to find the transformation matrix of A relative to B. Now to do this, you can simply find the inverse of TAB and you would get TBA. There are multiple methods that can be used to find the inverse of a matrix such as Gaussian elimination, but a shortcut method that I use is this particular formula. So here you have your TAB which comprises of the rotation matrix and the position vector. To find the inverse of this matrix you can directly apply this formula. So looking at the formula you can see that the columns in the rotation matrix have been transposed to rows in the inverse matrix and the final column for the inverse matrix can be found using this particular formula. Note that this method is only applicable for a 4x4 matrix which means it won't hold true if you have a 5x5 or a 3x3 matrix. So to make things clearer, let's have a look at an example. Feel free to pause the video and give this a go before I work it out. Alright, so the question shown here tells us that we have a robot arm connected to a gripper. The gripper is holding a camera. which is focusing on some sort of object. The three transformation matrices given show us the object relative to the camera, that's the first transformation matrix. The second shows us the camera relative to the gripper. And the third, the gripper relative to the arm. The question, however, asks us to directly calculate the transformation matrix of the object relative to the arm using the three intermediate matrices. So let's see how this is done. 
We want to find the transformation matrix of the object relative to the arm. This would be given by transformation matrix arm to the gripper. So you move down, you start at the arm and you move all the way down to the object. Arm to gripper, gripper to the camera, and the camera to the object. Right. So if you have a look at these three transformation matrices, you would see that the frame here should match the frame over here. And the final frame here should be the same as the frame here. The intermediate frames should also match gripper to gripper and cam to cam. Now let's have a look at the three individual transformation matrices. You can see that this transformation matrix object relative to the camera is already given in the question. And so this matrix is there. The second matrix which is the camera relative to the gripper is also given in the question. And so this matrix is there. The first transformation matrix however is the gripper relative to the arm. The question gives us the opposite matrix which is the arm relative to the gripper. So to calculate this transformation matrix we can simply take the inverse of the given transformation matrix which is the inverse of this matrix. The first step in solving this problem would be to find the inverse transformation matrix and the second step would be to multiply all these three matrices together to get our desired matrix. So the first step would be to find the inverse transformation matrix of the arm relative to the gripper and this would give the desired transformation matrix which is the gripper relative to the arm. To do this we can use the equation we discussed previously. So the transformation matrix of our gripper relative to the arm would be equal to the first step is to transpose this column or the first column into the first row. So doing that would give me 0, 1, 0. Then transpose the second column into the second row, negative 1, 0, 0, and the third column into the third row. Right, so for the final column, we can use these three equations. Px in this case is 0, and a1 is 0. So 0 times 0 is 0. Py is 0, a2 is 1. That's 0. And PZ is 4, but A3 is 0, which again gives us 0. PX0, B1 is negative 1, 0. PY0, B2, 0. And PZ4, but B3, 0. The final element, PX0, C1, 0. PY0, C2, 0. And P is at 4, C3, 1. That gives us 4. The final row is 0, 0, 0, and 1. So this gives the transformation matrix as 0, 1, 0. Zero, 0, and negative 4. So the final step in finding the transformation matrix of the object relative to the arm is to multiply these three transformation matrices together as we derived at the start of this question. So this would be equal to the inverse transformation matrix times the transformation matrix of the camera relative to the gripper and finally the transformation matrix of the object relative to the camera. And if you multiply these three matrices together you should get this as your final answer for the transformation matrix of the object relative to the arm. Alright guys, so that's all for this video. If you guys liked it, please click the like button below.
If you have any questions on compound transformations, please leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. I hope this video helped and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe.